23 simple redstone machines you need to build. Redstone is one of the great cornerstones of Minecraft, though sometimes it can be pretty complex to work with. So today, let's look at the easy to grasp redstone machines that will work great in your world. And hey, the YouTube pillagers bet me that you can't save these villagers before the raid starts. So to keep them safe, ring that subscribe bell down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one. In the recent updates, piglin bartering has been a huge help to Minecraft, but if you don't have the best luck on the market, it can take a while. So in that case, building a piglin bartering machine like this is super simple to do, and it can save you a lot of time. The way it works is super simple. All you need to do is just fill the machine with gold and then press the button to let it work. And the way that it does it is super straightforward. All that happens is that a golden ingot will go onto the pressure plate, the piglin will pick it up, and then that'll alert the system to refill. Just like that, you got an endless cycle going and you'll be able to get the bartering trades going straight down into chest for your uses. Number two, redstone circuitry is great from a technical standpoint, but most of the time it isn't a real looker. So if you're trying to upkeep a certain aesthetic in your base, then what you gotta build is a smart magic button. This button is actually able to power the piston below, even though there's a block in between them. However, for the piston to realize it, we are gonna need some from a block update, which is why we have this note block down here to provide the pistons with updates, but not the power, which means when the button gets pressed, the piston gets extended and the whole illusion gets set up. Just make sure to keep your carpet cover up intact, because after all, a magician should never reveal their secrets. Number three, going over lava in the nether is a huge pain. So if you yourself still don't have an elytra and you're trying to get around the dimension, this is definitely the way to do it. You gotta build a basalt bridge maker. Through the help of flying machines and some extra potent ice, we can actually have it where this machine will get set off and just make a straight line of basalt right in front of it. And to its credit, all these new pathways that you'll be making work really nicely with all the biome colors that you're passing. Make it not only a practical choice for nether traversal, but also one that seems to blend in. Number four, finding the ancient debris necessary to get netherite is a real hassle to do. And while sure, having plenty of beds and TNT to do that process does speed it up, what if you don't have a lot of resources? Well, if you still got a hankering for explosions, then you gotta build a TNT duper for netherite mining. Basically what we're doing is we're dropping TNT onto an obsidian platform and then using all of that new TNT explosion power to then explode further and further out into the mines. And while you are going to have to look out for those pesky lava pockets, really, you're clearing out so many blocks of this anyway, they can just move it around and you won't even waste time. Number five, when it turns to nighttime, we all know that lighting up your base is a huge thing you got to worry about, but a litter of torches across the ground isn't exactly looking great. So redstone lamps are a pretty good option, but what would really turn those redstone lamps up to the nines is if you put daylight sensors on top of them inverted. And just like that, folks, as soon as it turns to nighttime, you're going to see all of your pathways light up. And just like that, you've got no reason to not put one of these in your base. Or you know what? They're so easy to set up. How about throw a couple in for good measure? They're just that simple to build. Number six. Let's say you go out for a day of mining, you come back up to the surface, and now it's nighttime and you're looking to sleep. Fortunately, enderpearl stasis systems are all the rage for that. By doing a simple enderpearl stasis setup like this and then having a daylight sensor to power it, then as soon as it's nightfall, you're going to get taken right back to your bed for sleep. Though worth mentioning is that if this is going to work, you got to have this in loaded chunks. But sure enough, if you keep that ender pearl stasis loaded at all times, then it's going to bring you back right on cue without fail. Meaning that whatever you spent your day doing, you're always going to be back for a good night's rest. Number seven. When you're looking to smelt a bunch of items, then charcoal stands out as a great fuel source. But if you're getting tired of having to do all the manual labor of chopping down the logs, putting them into the furnaces, and then cycling it back to be fuel, then this machine will save you a couple hassles. You see, the way it works is that this machine is self-refueling. This machine will actually burn through every log it's got, and then take some of the fuel to then refuel the new logs getting burnt. Then just like that, you're going to have all the fuel necessary for every super smelter you need in the future. And more importantly, you'll be energy independent while do it. Number eight. While animal farms can be very easy to build in Minecraft, sometimes you want to get the butchering off your hands. So in that case, for all your meat needs, this is really all you got to build. The way that it works is that we breed the animals, we overstuff it with entity cramming, and then any new ones will kill off the old ones through, well, getting squished. The result might not be humane, and it's definitely not free range, but hey, the results that you get from this is really nothing to sneeze at. There's no reason you shouldn't be putting one of these in your world, especially early on when you're trying to fill up your belly. Number nine. Beacons are a universally great block in Minecraft, but it turns out they've got one slight flaw. 
the beacon actually cannot provide the full regeneration effect when it's turned on. Rather, you gotta turn it off and back on intermittently to get the full effect. Which, admittedly, it sounds like a glitch, but for as long as it's in the game, you should be solving it with one of these, a beacon enabler switch. All we're having here is just a timer system that turns the beacon on and off when we need it to. And until Mojang takes the time to tighten the screws on this problem, then this is really the best way to get your regen effect through and through. Number 10. Cooked chicken is a staple in a Minecraft player's diet, and a lot of that is because my Minecraft chickens are so easy to farm. Look no further than this design, it's gotten so simple to put together an auto chicken cooker that really it goes well whenever you want to build it. Although the main thing to note if you're trying to build this is that the hopper minecart should be put on the slab before you build any of the rest of the machine. If you don't have that in place, then you're going to lose a lot of unnecessary items to burning. And as soon as you got that in place, you'll be able to get all the lava fried chicken your heart desires with a design that Colonel Sanders would definitely approve of. Number 11. Shulker boxes have been an invaluable addition to Minecraft ever since they got added in. But while they're good at cleaning up your survival inventory, sometimes it's annoying to have to take all the items manually out of a shulker box and put it into your chests. So to save yourself that headache, a shulker unloader is a really easy solution that's gonna save you a lot of time down the road. Just like that, you put your shulker boxes in the top chest, press the button, and it'll start unloading all of the shulkers into the chest below. From here, you could have the items go into an item sorter or whatever, it doesn't matter to me. As long as you build one of these, you're really gonna be saving yourself some time next time that you gotta clear out your inventory. Number 12. If you've ever played on Skyblock, then everyone is familiar with the concept of a cobblestone generator. That being said, we've been able to do a lot of work on this machine ever since taking it off the island. And you can see as much when you look at this, which is an automatic cobblestone generator. With this new and improved design, we really take a lot of the hassle out of this process. And while anything we make is gonna have a hard time rivaling the simplicity of what you get on a Skyblock island, this is still fairly simple to grasp. So if you're looking to load up on stone before your next big project, maybe look to building one of these instead of another trip to the quarry. Number 13. Now, I'll admit, throwing items into lava is fun. It's an easy way to get rid of trash, and plus, you get to have the fun of destroying something. But when you've got too much rubbish that you don't know what to do with, then really you should be looking into getting an auto dropper system. Folks, by putting one of these in your world, we've got the full setup for an automatic trash can disposal. This one does as it says on the tin. You fill it up, and then as soon as you leave it, it's going to throw all of your items into the abyss. So whether you're using lava, the void, or in our case, a cactus, just choose whatever block of destruction you want to use and send your items goodbye. Number 14. Whether you need sugar for speed potions or plenty of pages for your books, a sugarcane farm really stands out in your world. And lucky for us, with the help of new redstone systems and blocks, these have gotten so simple to build. And better yet, if you use a design like we have on screen, you can actually stack these modules to get even more sugarcane for whatever your needs are. You can just take the sugarcane as it comes and put it into whatever uses you've got, which means you get to enjoy yourself a sugar high without having to worry about the inevitable crash afterwards. Number 15. I don't need to tell you folks that elytras can be a great amount of fun in your world. Though I should mention, if you're looking to add on to that enjoyment, then you gotta get yourself an elytra launcher. If we make sure to run at this system at a 45 degree angle, then all of a sudden we're gonna be taken to the skies just like that. Making this a pretty solid way to get a decent boost if you don't got a lot of fireworks coming through yet. Giving you an easy to build and fun to use way to get around your base. And really, who doesn't want a little extra spring in their step every now and then? No one I wanna hang out with, that's for sure. Number 16. There's no two ways about it. If you're gonna be spending a lot of time in a Minecraft world, you're gonna need wood. So of course, that means you gotta turn to tree farms. The way this particular farm works is that we set up our mouse in such a way that we're constantly right-clicking and left-clicking as needed, which means we'll place all our saplings, break all the logs, and then repeat the process at nauseum. Now, there are two disclosures we gotta mention here. For one, every log that you get out of this is gonna be stripped. And secondly, while this farm can work with a few different wood types, if you're using spruce and jungle, then it's just gonna cost a bit more bone meal. Number 17. In a lot of ways, concrete can be a very handy block to have around, but converting a lot of powder is not on anyone's to-do list. So, it's in your best interest to make a simple concrete converter. Much like a tree farm, if you place the concrete powder in your offhand and a pickaxe in your main, all you gotta do is just hold down your mouse buttons and you're gonna convert all of that concrete as much as you want. Heck, even fill up the dropper with plenty more concrete stacks and it'll actually refill you as you're going through. Meaning that with extra hoppers and chest storage, there's really no limit to how much concrete you convert here. 
Number 18. Most of us don't want to babysit, so when you got your stuff smelting up in a furnace, you really don't want to watch every single second of it. But it still would be nice to know when it's done. So to fix those two problems, we're able to build a very simple alert system to tell you when the furnace is done smelting. No matter what item you got cooking up, as soon as it finishes, you're going to get a little tune in your ear and then you'll know, oh, my thing is done. Believe me, it's not complex, but putting one of these together in your world is a nice little reminder for whenever you're trying to get jobs done. That way you can still multitask at your base without having to worry about losing any efficiency. Number 19. Say you want to build a potion shop in your friend's SMP. It's a good business venture, but now you got to fill up more bottles than anyone has time for. So to fix this problem, all you got to build is an automatic water bottle filler. This does right as the name implies. You didn't put any glass bottles at the top, it spits out the filled ones down below, and you're good to go. Meaning you have plenty of time to focus on the more important and fun part of a brewing business, which is of course, the brewing. Honestly, leave the grunt work to the machines and just save all your artisanship for where it's actually needed. Number 20. While anvils definitely have their place in your Minecraft world, it is unfortunate having to go and run back to fix one every time your old one breaks. So to save any all embarrassment of having to go back and fix one of these together in a crafting grid, all we need is a straightforward anvil refilling system. All we do is count the different damage states of the anvil until eventually, when it knows it breaks, we just place down a new one. Almost like a gift from God, it drops from the heavens, and now you're ready to get going on any and all enchanted books you gotta put together. Number 21. Ask anyone in the redstone community, honey blocks changed the game when they were added in. Which, for better or worse, means you need a lot of them for any redstone contraptions you're putting together these days. So obviously we gotta put our buzzing bees to work and get ourselves a honey farm. Using the designs that people like Il Mango and others have put together, we're able to not only get our bee bar from a pretty small footprint, but we can also stack it. The result is a clean cut way to get all the honey blocks that you'll ever need. And if you're willing to breed all the bees to get enough of them, then you can definitely put one of these together to get all those honey blocks in a relatively fast time. Number 22. Obviously going to the nether is a necessity of Minecraft travel, but when you're not using it, Nether portals are kind of an eyesore. They're loud, they've got a weird color scheme, and they can definitely spawn some piglins if you're not careful. So to take all that hassle out of your world, you can build a switch like this that'll automatically disable a portal as soon as you go through it. Using a delay circuit like this, we can have it so you stand in the portal, press the button, teleport, and then all the evidence is clear behind you. Which not only makes for a pretty cool way to get to the nether, but it also saves you the trouble of having an unstable dimensional gate open at all times in your base. Number 23. Say, for example, you're looking to get yourself up on top of a second floor, but there's no staircase or ladder in sight. Well, if we closely examine this button, we can see that's not an issue. By giving that a press, a slime block will pop out of the floor and launch us to wherever we need to go. It's hidden, it's sneaky, and it's definitely fun to use. So really, if you haven't taken the time to put together a hidden slime block launcher, what are you waiting for? It's not a big investment to make, and if you don't have any use for it yet, then you should probably find one. It's just that fun to put together. And with that, folks, power that red sub button below, and have a good one, all right?